and welcome to the LVMH Gallery. It's my great pleasure to welcome you here at La Fondation Louis Vuitton for this a new series on innovation and sustainability for the VivaTech edition of 2021. And yes, 2020 has been a decisive year when it comes to online sales. As shops closed, digital channels have developed dramatically. To dive into this story, it's my great pleasure again to be joined here by Franck Lemoal. Hi to you, Franck. Hello. You're the group chief information officer. Yes, I try. <laughs> and Michael David. Michael, you're the group's chief omnichannel officer. Yes, hi, how are you? So far, so good. Mm -hmm. So actually, both of you gentlemen, as well as your teams, had a lot on your plate, let's put it this way, uh, over the past uh, few months. And LVMA generated 45 billion sales last year. How did online sales perform? Quite well, I have to say. As a matter of fact, uh, online sales really jumped and broke all-time records for a lot of our maisons. That was obviously good news for the group because it helped um, offset some of the losses that resulted from the stores being closed. Um, so we were very pleased with that. Um, and I will add that uh, digital technology also allowed us to not only achieve a you know, decent amount of sales, but also maintain a strong connection with our clients. And that was priceless. Frank. Yeah, I think uh, Michael did a very good summary. Uh, E-commerce activity has dramatically boomed, uh, let's say, everywhere, especially in the US. For example, Louis Vuitton and Sephora face massive increase of their online sales uh, uh, in, in Americas. And if you take the example of China, it's exactly the same mm -hmm. uh, concept. Uh, I think made, most of our brand uh, saw a significant increase in China on their .com, on their .cn, on their WeChat platform. So it was really impressive uh, in 2020. So I'm kind of curious, how did the group uh, support the brands during uh, this process? Yeah, and it's been said before, but I think we need to be humble enough to recognize that, you know, COVID was probably the best ever uh, digital transformation officer that we've had. Uh -huh. Um, it's definitely uh, it's definitely helped. Um, the thing is, due to lockdown, our clients only had their laptop, their cell phone, their WeChat app uh, to connect with us. So our responsibility was really to adapt, focus on that, and as a group, we helped uh, bring the the brands, the maisons together uh, to try to find you know opportunities to mutualize and just get smarter and and get faster. Yeah. Uh, definitely, I think uh, COVID nineteen has been. Uh, uh, the chief digital official of the group in 2020. Uh, I think at group level, it allowed us also to duplicate uh, best practice and share best practice between brands, such as, let's say, uh, video appointment, remote selling, 360 product presentation, uh, client telling, as we discussed, and pay by link. It was also a, a, a strong, uh, let's say, a strong push uh, to support all of these, all of these initiatives. Yeah. Frank is absolutely right. And to, to make that happen, we actually had daily calls with, uh, with the chief digital officers in the, uh, in the group. And they showed up because it was not, not just a question of performance. It became a question of survival at some point last year. Absolutely. So again, being curious as I am, uh, what were the most impressive digital achievements uh, you actually made happen and made possible during this pandemic at the group's level? Mm -hmm. You want to start? Uh, I, I think for me, I think one of the most impressive was probably again clienting and one-to-one -one commerce. Uh, we had the opportunity to, to develop, let's say, great mobile apps in, in order to allow our sales advisor to interact with our final customer remotely. And by the way, they are still using them. Uh, I think uh, we had absolutely perfect example of this approach uh, in Céline, in Dior Couture, in Bulgari, in Fendi, in Louis Vuitton. Uh, if you take the example of Céline, the Céline mobile apps allow a sales advisor to uh, share product, to uh, interact with the customer, to set uh, a remote appointment, to share at the end uh -huh. a final selection of product, mm -hmm. and with, let's say, because it's really important, with instant payment. Uh, I think uh, another very good story from my perspective is the one of Sephora. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the growth of e-commerce of Sephora was so impressive in Europe that finally they had to organize very quickly and introduce very quickly what we call ship from store uh -huh. in order to meet, let's say, customer demand and customer expectation. They had to ship from the store in order to better support, let's say, the warehouse a little bit, uh, let's say, uh, struggling with uh, some issue in terms of capacity. So 
yeah. perfect example. I would actually add to that that there was also a lot of work that was done internally in terms of our processes and how we handle, for example, fashion shows and buying sessions. And that to me was incredibly impressive because overnight a group the size of LVMH was able to pivot and switch to full sure. remote, full digital, and the entire world, you know, went, mm -hmm. got behind it and it, it just happened so quickly. It was really astounding. And definitely helped everyone, every brand and maison to uh, make it to a new kind of storytelling too. Exactly. But if we take the example of Dior, for instance, can we have the seamless, very same experience online and in boutiques? You know, people used to think that the only uh, true luxury experience had to be in a store. And there's, of course, uh, some truth to it, but uh, not necessarily always the case, right? Uh, and, and honestly, I don't think that it's our place to decide. I think it's the client's place to decide what luxury means to them. Uh -huh. We have very different client uh, profiles and uh, we have a lot of clients, for example, who are cash rich but time poor. Uh -huh. Their set of expectations is radically different. Their definition of luxury is different. So our challenge is to adapt and, and provide the same level of excellence to all these uh, client profiles. Well, they say time's money for a reason. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Frank, what about you? Yeah, but I, I think, um, uh, you know, tech is boosting more and more, let's say, creation. Uh, showroom and, and, and brand communication and, and the, the example of Dior is a, is a perfect one but there is many others in the group uh, and, and when, you, when you see that finally uh, very quickly uh, let's say brand were able to manage a full digital fashion show on, on various channels uh, like their dot com website like uh, let's say Instagram on YouTube with, uh, with a more and more immersive experience I think we are now uh, reaching a new level and, and it, I think it was really impressive. And I mean, again, I guess that this digital acceleration uh, is kind of a cultural shock when it comes to uh, such a, a century-old luxury uh, industry uh, as LV Image is definitely part of. Um, is it still a cultural shock? No, honestly, <laughs> I wouldn't say that it's a shock at this point. Everybody understand how strategic the, the topic has become. Uh -huh. um, our clients have been online, are online today, use digital technologies at some point or multiple points in their journey. So it's not really a shock. Um, it's a challenge, however, for us to take that to the next level, which is that seamless, you know, omni-channel experience that everybody has been talking about for so long that is really, really hard to achieve. So that's what uh, we've been um, working hard on uh, with the teams and in a way if I want to be a little cynical mm. last year helped us um, forced us to really get ahead um, and and be where our clients expect us to be yeah again a pandemic is a pretty good driver for change exactly and I guess this type of storms brings us unexpected events do you have any unusual anecdotes to share with us if I can, for example, summarize a very good uh, example from my perspective, it will be probably the story we have with the uh, uh, recent LVMH uh, price uh, website uh, for young creators. We had the opportunity to use new technology and especially 360 uh, product technology. Uh, we were able to, uh, to make it uh, fully digital mm -hmm. in, let's say, in a few days. Uh, we were able to shoot uh, all, all pictures. And, and uh, when you look at the situation before, it could have probably taken us uh, months to do that before. So it's really uh, the great example of the energy and, and the capability we have with, uh, let's say, a new tool and new technology. Did you have anything to change in your management process to actually make this uh, digitization acceleration happen? We, we change a lot, uh, I think. And, and by the way, it's very interesting in LVMH, so we probably control less. Uh, we had to really uh, trust our team in corporate in the region. Uh, it was also a fantastic opportunity to uh, implement a new mindset, a new mindset sorry, of uh, harmonization, of sharing uh, between, uh, let's say, our maison, between the brand, between mm -hmm. the digital team and between the technical team. And, and um, I think uh, we had also a superb opportunity to focus on agility, uh, to better adapt and to better react. So uh, again, it's a, it's a strong accelerator in terms of mindset and, and uh, and, and human uh, capability to manage our team to reach a new level. A new culture has emerged. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> and we actually also um, um, talked about the fact that creators had to adopt a completely uh, different storytelling mm -hmm. and, and came up with new ideas. What would the fashion show from the future look like from your perspective? Well, I, I don't think um, either of us has a crystal ball to tell you <laughs> that. Uh, but, um, you know, today, uh, a brand will, a fashion brand will be able to put together, you know, a few 
fashion shows every year, two, three, four, or whatever. Uh -huh. uh, those shows are incredibly uh, unique, they're incredibly polished, but every person, every potential client or existing client sees the exact same show. We can imagine that the future will bring a bit more flexibility and personalization. Uh, you can easily imagine options where uh, models, for example, will change depending on the country, depending even, why not, on, on the client. Um, so I think we're going towards more flexibility and also more interactivity thanks to technology. But what's on your to-do list, gentlemen? What's your next goal? I would love for our clients to be able to shop anywhere Anytime. Uh, so that goes back to the you know omnichannel discussion. Um, for that, we're going to have to free ourselves of physical constraints and timing constraints, which is not uh, not an easy task. But I think it's it's our uh, duty, and that's why we have been putting so much emphasis on clienteling, one-to-one -one commerce, social commerce, to really develop that that ability uh, for our clients. What's on your to the list, Frank? Uh, probably two two. Uh, Two uh, strong objectives. Uh, I, I think in the in the coming years, uh, I predict, uh, by the way, a strong convergence between our brand in order to really leverage a common platform and common solution in order okay. to faster and, and to foster this transformation. First, and as Michael said, I think the the, the paradigm uh, of of the uh, of the interaction with the customer will change. I'm sure that technology will allow us more and more to create online experience, close from the one we have in, the, in our exceptional store today. And, and uh, I think we have also uh, capability, potentially capability soon to uh, uh, be able to uh, feel, uh, feel the material, uh, smell, the, uh, you know, smell, touch. So uh, everything will help us to make the, the virtual world a, a bit real, especially uh, close to the product is uh, well, it's, yeah. it's a new journey we, we need also to to take and and we have to invest yeah. and there's the power of data yeah. as well uh -huh. right sure. that allows us to improve our level of personalization of service that we're in a luxury group so that's what we're all about uh, for the client but also for our retail teams uh, we're actually giving them superpowers uh -uh. So that's really interesting. Well, I'm not going to say, gentlemen, you are the Avengers of digital <laughs> transformation. We wish. Thank you so much, gentlemen, again, Thank for you. your perspective on uh, the digital transformation of LVMH itself. Stay with us. More innovative solutions to come in the gallery.